Okay, it's time to get on the road again. So I'm going to be going to the Scarlet Chorus camp to speak with Fifth Eye to uh, get a start on this primary objective. I don't actually have brilliant reputation with the Scarlet Chorus yet, so that's something that hopefully I can amend when I get there. That will help things if I have a bit better reputation. It's going to take five hours to get there. We are on the clock up against the deadline. After eight days, this uh, whole valley is going to be destroyed, basically. So I do have to be a bit careful about what I do. I do definitely don't want to be resting too much, uh, camping uh, to regain wounds that I receive in combat, if I do pick up any wounds. Uh, we can actually see the map down here, and it looks like there's a lot of interesting things here actually. There's quite a bit of loot here and there. So I'm gonna want to pay that a visit. I got it. I think rather than crawling around the map now though to look for hidden objects, I'll do that a bit later on. And uh, let's turn that on. Right, there's something down here. Uh, that is a broken staff for checking sell. For my main character as well, I decided to take off a couple of the armaments he has, uh, armor. It just wasn't really doing anything for me. It was adding a ton of recovery time, giving a small bonus to precision in the case of the gloves, and a tiny bit of accuracy in the case of the helmet. But yeah, the recovery time really does matter, especially if I'm wearing this big heavy armor. I think long term with him, the defensive option, I might just go with him for, instead of heavy armor or light armor, I just might go for tons of health actually. I think I should go for one option out of the three. And uh, recovery time is very important when I wanted to maximize my ability use, which I do since this is a quick character. Right, there's something going on up. Sorry, can't. Dear plainly. Rotting body bearing scarlet chorus war paint is skewered upon a wooden pike. I'm not really sure what to do first here because I really want to pick up reputation. I'm not sure if I can pick it up there or not. I can't remember. So let's check out these guys. These are chorus grounds. State your business or get lost. The guard places her hands by her belt as you approach, gripping the hilt of a blade. Past this point is Chorus Territory, and you don't look like someone's conscript. You sure you're in the right place? Alright, uh, so I'm going to go for the minor favour, I think, here. God tenses up, locking eyes with you. That walking hunk of rust. What's he, she, maybe it, doing here? Are we looking yeah, a bit short still on the first tier? You dolt, this is the fate binder. Gain the favour, major favour as well. Ah, and here we go. Uh, we've got the first reputation point, which is what I was hoping for. He's been with us since the damn start, even shed blood at the gates of judgment. Fucking new fish, start learning the names and faces, or find work as someone's moving target. So this is a decision made back in Conquest, of course. The guard shakes her head, blushing with embarrassment. I'm terribly sorry, now please come right in. Right, so that is what I was hoping for. Take another step, I'll pin your foot to the dirt. Let's have a word with these guys then. It proves everything. The warrior slams her fists together in a resounding clap. Like for instance, whether you're fit to lead that flock of children. Behind her, the members of her gan posture with weapons held at the ready. Did you not hear the news of the edict? This is a foolish distraction. We ought to be saving our fight for the enemy. 
I'm going to say nothing, see how this develops, I think. And with the next battle being so important, all the more reason your warriors should follow me when the time comes. She lifts a lock of her hair away from her face with a bronze dagger smiling wickedly as the blade hovers close to her eye. Then it seems we have no other way about it. With a nod to his gan, he readies his weapon. Okay, there's a number of options here. I think it might be time for the fake binder to step in and do some fake binding. I could walk away. I could let him get on with it. Gain some favour. Remain silent. Earn some money potentially. I'm going to ask what the problem is here. No problem here, Lord Binder. She tosses her blade in the air, catching it with a smile on the way down. Captain Fuckwits here seems he's about to balk from this challenge. Thinks just because he used to run a ship, he's qualified to run again. She spits on the ground, looking up with a scowl. So I'm calling him out. Because the way I see it, his warriors ought to follow me, not this new blood. Captain Fuckwit was my father. Fuckwit will do just fine. The warrior points at the opposing Gan. If we have to prove our strength, we'll do so happily. But I'll have your hands and feet removed and the rest of you kept for my own use. Let's try this option. This is foolish. Stop this at once. Excuse me. She widens her eyes in shock. This is our way, Fatebinder, and you have no right to stop us. We are not harming anyone outside the chorus. I don't know who you are, but I don't need your help. He looks back at his gan. I think we can handle ourselves just fine. So, there's a couple of skill options here which involve killing someone. Can get involved in fight still and I'll wager on it so I can let them fight it out. There's actually an option here though for Tune On, and this might be the first time for this. You can actually gain a favor with the boss of the Fate Binders, the Archon, and uh, that might actually be a pretty decent idea. Archon of Justice. But so I gain minor wrath. To be honest, I'm not that bothered about gaining minor wrath with them, so yeah, I'm going to go for this option. Now, I could get involved in a fight here, and the thing is, it isn't really a very big fight. There is opportunity to get in a much bigger fight in not too long a time. I think up until this point, though, there could have maybe been a bit more combat in Tyranny. There was potentially the option to... Get involved if you dishonor that blue flag, though, for instance, up until this point. But so far, it's only been the first level. But uh, there is plenty more on the way, trust me. So the Gan leader spins her knife for a moment, as if her answer bounces on the edge. Fine. With her answer, she flicks her knife to the ground and walks away. A spiteful glare cast in your direction. If we take a look in reputations, then Tunon is now showing up here. So I think he might be, uh, yeah, important to get on good sides with. So hopefully that will, well, that might turn out pretty well for me later on. Go away! I have nothing to say to you. What did you expect? My thanks. So they're pretty unhappy. I think what I'm going to do now, well, there's some loot over here, so I'm going to pick that up first of all, on the outskirts. <laughs> Got it. And we've actually just gained a level with first, which is very close to leveling up. So, let's stick that in the stash. Let's stick that there. Now, something I don't know for sure is if you can gain experience if you don't level up straight away. I think you're going to hold off and see uh, what the situation is with that. Uh, because I don't really need to level up now, other than I'm, if I'm going to get into combat, for example. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
Slow stealth from the outskirts, steady. try and find something, and then we'll enter the camp. Okay, it turned out there was nothing more of interest outside the outskirts of the camp. Couldn't find anything hidden. If I was going to level up versus subterfuge, in effect, by increasing either quickness or wits, it might have been a good idea to level up now. But yeah, I'm going to just hold off. I do have a, an idea about where I'm going to level up her attributes. I'm probably going to go for finesse to increase her accuracy and her armor deflection. She already is focusing highly into that, so yeah, that's probably the direction I'm going to go. I would have uh, preferred more dodge though, maybe, which I would need quickness for. I may actually level that up at some point as well, but I do want her to be able to be pretty good at surviving. Uh, because she may become the target in many of the engagements I get into later, that's how I'm thinking it's going to happen. Right, so let's get into this camp though, anyway. So, let's come down here. It's mainly due to the level of armor, and I'm expecting her to have probably the least right. armor. But, really amazing defenses. Uh, so she's going to be a target for engagement, and there's a way... She has talents that I can use to get her out of trouble a lot. I'll use other party members to boost her defensive abilities, so I'm probably going to do. Right, there's actually Fifth Eye over here, and he is, of course reason why we're here to pick up a quest but I think before I do that I'm gonna have a look around this camp uh, speak with people pick up the loot and then get back to him right it's actually thin here and I can show uh, that I believe that experience is still gained even if you don't level up straight away so current experience is seven let's find this out so it's a scroll 32 lore I need for that and that's pretty friggin' amazing actually. There's a sigil core for illusion here. And you can see versus experience has actually gone up despite the fact that uh, I haven't leveled her up. Which is great. So, let's take a look at this illusion. New spell type. And you can see some spells here. I've two expressions, so two different spell types for illusion. There's extra deflection for against grazes and hits, and a sizable amount. You'd have to wear a lot of armor to get that amount. Unless you had big bonuses. And there's false pits, which is a small amount of raw damage, a prone affliction, which uh, parry and dodge produced with that. And... Yeah, I'm not sure how good that is to be honest, but yeah, I may very well want to add some illusion spells to some of these guys a bit later on. We'll have to see. Okay, let's get moving around camp then. So, on it. Small marks have been painted onto this corpse, marking certain body parts as more difficult targets than others. These threadbit tents show signs of hard use and long-term exposure to the elements. Something worth picking up here, and it's actually a helmet. A crimson spear helm. Definitely gonna want that. Let's check. Is that in more detail? It's heavy armor, bronze. To be honest, though, it doesn't give an awful lot, does it? And it adds a huge amount of recovery time, so I'm not sure. Although this guy's well suited for heavy armor, I need to keep his character recovery time down as well if I'm going to frequently use his ability. So I'm not sure I want to use it with him or not. Even if it does look pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'll have to figure that out later. I'm not sure how good that is either. Okay, so who is this? Scarlet Fury, just like first. And let's talk to Snigler Dagos. Upon noticing your approach, the merchant straightens his posture and smiles. What an honor! The name Snigler Dagos, originally from the relative tranquility of the Northern Empire. I've since accepted a nomadic life for the sake of keeping Kairos' forces supplied with only 
the finest goods, local and imported. Let me see your wares. He winces a little. It's not much, but let me know if you see anything that piques your interest. Well, he says not much, but that's pretty good going in many respects. He's got a new sigil core. I definitely want that. And I actually want both of those as well, but I'm going to have to sell some stuff if I'm going to be able to afford that. And he actually has a lot of Scarlet Chorus related uh, armor and even accessories. What's that? Control Fire. Bronze Dagger, Blood Chanter Staff, a Ripper, very, very expensive. I think for now then, I'll just buy that scroll. Okay. And with scrolls, actually, since they give you lore experience when you use them, maybe you should hold off until you get certain, well, more companions within your party so they can all level up. And I think I'm actually going to hold off in this uh, circumstance for some reason. Who knows? Might be get might be getting enough companion. Okay, let's have a more of a look around the camp then. Can't talk with any of those guys, but there is more loot down here. These spears are brittle and rusted. Uh, it's a bent bronze sword which I can sell. The stench of piss and fecal matter emanate from this tent. One clearly not used for rest. I would hope not, anyway. And who's down here? The horde member. Can't talk to them. There's more loot down there. Horde members. Okay. Snap that. Another broken weapon. Right. Okay. It's quite a shiv over there. I think they were up there, weren't they? And uh yeah, she's not interested in talking. Okay. There is shattered iron spolder. Armor. And wow, there's a huge level subterfuge crate there, and I've actually got enough for that. <laughs> got it. Uh, mirrored stompers, which are bronze, heavy armor, reflect 10% of incoming hostile spells back to casters, long recovery time. May want to use those. The actual. Starting boots you get, though, Commander's Will, they're really good. Remove a hostile effect on kill, and only your player character can actually wear them, so it's a bit of an issue. Uh, if you want to wear something else, you'll be giving up that uh, ability with them. Right, is there any more loot over here? There's a couple of people there that I want to talk with, no doubt. There's a couple of bits of loot over there, though, so I'm going to grab that. And I think you can even sleep there as well. Should Will you do. get damaged, but I haven't picked up any wounds yet because I've been in combat much. Even when I do get into combat, hopefully I won't be picking them up when we're on the deadline. Okay, some people over here. Oh, and I've actually found something. There's a hidden object there. Which shows Curious. don't need to be in stealth all that much, perhaps, to find these, it would seem. You did in pillars, maybe it's not so much in tyranny. It's hard to know though. It does mention you get a bonus if you go in stealth mode for finding these limbs. There's rot spear here, which is a consumable stash. Uh, another locked. That wasn't so hard. There. Camp supplies, but we've got four maximum, so can't make use of that. I can't even take it, I think. No, you're breaching maximum number of camping 
supplies. Let's stick that there. What's that? Most of these provisions are with it with a rot. Okay. What's that? Bar this barrel is full of murky red water, severed limbs, bob, and the greasy soup skin. Nice, delightful. Battle plans are scribbled over a bloodstained map of the tears. Arrow points. Arrows point towards the inner ring of the Vendrian's Well Valley, and small circles are drawn around the citadel. Okay, yeah, more consumables, water. And cheese. These arrows are splintered. They're Fletcher mottled. They were likely pulled from corpses. Right, I think I've looked all around the camp now, basically. So, let's find some people to have a word with, is it? Right, let's start off with Salveros. Hail feet binder of Tunon, a disfavoured officer pounds a heavy gauntlet against his chest in a stiff but warm greeting. Were I a betting or a superstitious man, I'd say fortune must favour me today. I am not. But I'm pleased to meet you all the same. Now, what brings you to my little slice of personal damnation, otherwise known as... He spreads his thickly gloved hands wide. This here mud and shit stinking chorus camp. So he's uh, the emissary to this camp, like a uh, bit of quip was to the uh, his favourite camp, I believe. Have you anything you'd like to report, soldier? Maybe you've noticed something unusual during your time here. He cants his head to one side, taken aback. What about the chorus isn't unusual? The army itself is a strange, malnourished beast. But no, no, the screamers seem mostly in order, sir. And I haven't been spying, if that's what you're implying, sir. Still as a post, he studies you sharply, scarcely appearing to breathe. Of course, even if I was, it'd be damn near impossible to learn anything from this shit sty. If I... And those damn furies don't even loop me in enough for me to do my detail. And it's not for lack of trying on my part. What do you mean? Disfavoured? Gain minor favour? Scarlet Chorus? Lose minor favour? Right, because it seems you're so easy to work with. Or stay silently. I'm going to try that one. For the time being. He guffaws, loud and bemused. Aren't I? I, Marshal, always said I was too soft when it came to incomers on account of me being such a good natured fellow. This favoured gain a very minor favour. I didn't mention that that was the outcome, did it, before? And again. In fact, you should tell Death Nell that maybe she'll stop hiding troop movements from me or passing me enemy intelligence she thinks gets me killed, or will get me killed, gain very much favour. Why are you stationed with the chorus? Can I do a different option for that? Yeah, there is actually a different option, surprisingly. From the way most of my days go, you'd think I was here to row or row with blood chanters and scarlet furies. But my post is to represent the disfavoured interest before Fifth Eye and the scarlet choruses before Iron Marshal Arrhenios. Not that I've gotten to do either in so much as the last span. What do you think? Or what do you think of the scarlet chorus? The rabid dogs, the lot of them, ever seen a screamer racing headlong into battle like a hound chasing a winter hare? I have, and I can tell you more often than not, it's the screamer who ends up skinned and gutted. Leave the campaign to the chaos, that's the chorus, and we're doomed. You act like it's a punishment to be assigned to this detail, isn't it? 
I know I fucked up to get here. Got three days in a hole and a nice little promotion to go with my new post. Well, I won't be making the same mistake twice when it comes to the Iron Marshal. He juts his chin toward the distant valley. I should be out there, fighting for Ash's glory. Not standing here ready to run back a report. Should something ever finally fucking happen. What exactly did you do to end up here? It's favoured favour one, reputation coming into play here. Made the grave mistake of suggesting the Iron Marshal wasn't fully utilising the Scarlet Chorus. Well, here I am. A liaison's officer to a camp of liars and cheats who'd sooner get me than ask for my aid. Guess she showed me. Our lives are at risk and even then you can't get along with the chorus. Begging your pardon, sir, but I've never fought a battle where my life wasn't on the line. He shrugs. Kind of the nature of war, isn't it? Uh, I'll ask that one as well. Have they been cooperative? No one tells me anything. They all lack honour and discipline. Don't think they could cooperate, even if it's what they actually wanted. He grunts. Guess I shouldn't be surprised, considering they serve the Archon of Secrets. You speak ill of one of Kairos's generals. Yeah, there's a disfavour there for doing that as well. No, no, you must know that I meant no disrespect to the Overlord, sir. He shifts beneath the weight of his armour uncomfortably. Besides, only a dumb shit or a dying man would insult the voices in his own camp. I don't intend to be neither. Right, I think I've exhausted all the options here. Farewell. Right, so let's find someone else to have a word with that. On it. So it looks like uh, there's a couple of people attached to a post. The fifth eye must authorize all prisoner visits. And for that one as well, there's a wolf over there. Uh, let's have a word with people practicing. How does he drop anchor if he can't take his armor off? Keep your thoughts to yourself, Chorus Maggot, says Baron. Watch yourself, Fake Binder. Okay, I think there's a couple of people over there which I want to have a word with. Reg and Baz. Okay. Well, look who we have here chewing on some manner of cud. A heavy set soldier, Flynn's spittle and crumbs as she talks. The fate binder finally shows himself. I'm Reg, the second soldier chimes in, and this is Baz. We were wondering when you might pay the camp a visit. The fifth eye has been a little starved for attention. He ordered us to... To watch you like a troublesome babe. Make sure you don't get out of line. Baz knits her fingers together, joints crackling as she smiles. Reg clears his throat loudly, scowling at Baz. Something like that. If you have questions, ask us. Good luck finding anyone else in camp who will give you answers, or even a smile. So, anything we can do for you? I think these guys uh, might offer training like the uh, couple that were in the disfavor camp as well. So, tell me about yourself, Baz, if my memory is correct. I was a sellsword at the beck and call of fat merchants, just another dented face in the crowd. After too many years of spilling blood in local skirmishes, I realized that I was only killing time. Then Kairos showed me a better way, unity, purpose. Now I fight for something, not just someone. Been watching the Scarlet Furies, practicing my blade work. Not good enough to join them yet, 
But I bet I could show you a thing or two. Yeah, there's an option there. Tell me about yourself, Reg. He scratches the back of his head at a loss for words. I had a family, a farm, then a chorus came and, well, now I have the chorus. Priorities change when you hear screams in the night and feel a blade pressed to your neck. Things like farms or families don't seem as important. I used to have nightmares thinking about the culling. Felt awful remembering how I hacked my ma and da to bits just so I could survive. Reg's eyes shadowed for a moment with sorrow. Take on a feverish gleam. The fifth eye heard me howling one night, pulled me out of the horde and took an interest in me. Now I'm studying magic, calling fire from nothing. If my ma and da could see me now, they'd be so proud. Tell me about your time in the Scarlet Chorus. Reg and I were conscripted at the Gates of Judgment. He used to fight for Ocon, me for Azure. Baz chuckles, sketching her chin in thought. How many fights we survive so far? Eleven? Reg begins to count in series across his fingers. No, fourteen. I count each day and Sunday separately. The chorus is... Baz looks about the camp and shrugs. Not as bad as it smells. The strong like me and Reg were allowed to take in what we want, what we deserve. We only live as well as our strength affords us, as it should be. What can you tell me about the fifth eye? Reg trades an uncomfortable glance with Baz and lowers his voice to a whisper. They say he shares a direct link with the voices of Narat. Guard your ten around him. He's a little... Wild. Bloodthirsty. Mad. Baz thinks for a moment. Brilliant. Reg flinches and glances over his shoulder. I was going to say eccentric. The chorus isn't picky about who joins the ranks. So you can expect to find some unusual types. Most are as likely to kill you as promote you. What you know about Vendrians well? The walls might seem imposing, but the Vendrian Guard do a better job of hiding its weaknesses than fixing them. She shrugs. We took the Citadel once before. We can take it again. We have to, don't we? Reg looks up at the imposing tower of the spire. Though Kairos knows I don't want to stay any longer than necessary. She follows his gaze and shakes her head. You should know better than to parade your cowardice before the fate binder. It's not cowardice, it's just superstition. Are you afraid of the spire? I... Sorry, fate binder, I shouldn't have mentioned anything. He sighs. The fact of the matter is... We were told to stay away from spires and old walls ever since we were babes. Of all the dumb childhood lessons that fell by the wayside, that one stayed the same. Imagine a soldier of the chorus pissing himself over architecture. More like what's underneath it, Reg frowns. The bane lurk around those old sites and kill anything they can catch unawares. I've no wish to meet the Bane in combat, unless there are a hundred blood chanters at my back. She twists her lip into a frown as she considers this. Me neither, I suppose. Baz, what can you teach me? Let's dance, Binder. Yeah, so these guys are trainers, basically. Uh, she specializes in bows dual wield and an arm combat. Probably won't be using her for too many of my companions. And Baz, if we have a look here again. Baz spits a wad of chewed bread into her open palm. These rations are foul. Taste it. Can't tell if it's poison or mold. I heard that our watches spotted a disfavored scout by the grain stores. You don't think... I feel fine. Maybe it's a herb to slow 
my hand in battle. Sabotage is a coward's weapon. Maybe it's just gone bad. Seeing you, Reg pockets his ration without taking a bite. Fate binder. Reg, show me what the fifth eye has been teaching you. We'll make this valley burn. Magic staff, subterfuge, and law. Law would definitely be good for everyone. But yeah, that uh, copper amount is going to get very expensive if I train all of my companions up. Okay, I think that's exhausted all the options of these guys. So let's find someone else to converse with. Okay, let's have a word with Death Nell then. You, as much an accusation as a question, the broad-shouldered woman shakes her head with a scowl. So you're the Tunon's fate binder. I was expecting something more impressive. She bows in spite of her misgivings. Death Nell, Scarlet Fury, my time is yours for as long as it amuses me. The fighter effortlessly spins a bronze sword about in her hand. Let's get one thing clear. Stick to your words and lore. Leave the fighting to the grown adults. Your corpse would just be a tripping hazard to those of us having a proper bit of carnage sport. We've got enough useless twats dying for our name as it is. All our horde recruits seem good for of late is piling in a shit reeking mound on the battlefield. She hums to herself and flips her sword side to side with several deft flicks of her wrist. Keep keeps up and we'll have to toughen our recruitment standards again. What now what you need? Insult me again and I'll bury that blade in your belly before you can scream. You have gained loyalty with first and gained favour with Scarlet Chorus, despite not mentioning it there. She peels a surprised but pleased laugh at your threat, tapping the flat of the blade against her thigh. She cants her neck until it audibly cracks. Maybe there's something more to the Fate Binders after all. What were you expecting? Let's see. Death Nell counts on her fingers, conducting some mental tally from your deeds during the conquest to how you've helped us since then. I expected a mountain, a warrior of colossal size who could shout a rampart wall into submission. She smiles. But I think you'll do just fine. And we got that because I have a bit of favour with the Horde now. You said something about the Horde thinning. Swelling until it's thundering and crashing and receding. It's been the way of the chorus for as long as I've been in it. She offers a one-shouldered shrug, ambivalent if anything, but more likely just uncaring. We take our prisoners alive, give them a chance yet to live, to be reborn into something better. Putting any and every able body to the sword, like the disfavoured do, is nothing but a waste. A conquered enemy is but a new ally. It merely requires the proper coercion. Of course, we do sometimes have the problem of lingering loyalties. Deserters are rarely successful in their escape. But they do try. The Vendoring Guard, strengthened by their numerous blood ties, have been particularly stubborn. So, I've a better plan hatched. I think, yeah, I want to carry favour here still, so let's go for this one. Brutal, efficient, I like it. And yeah, more favour. She tips her head to you, a smile playing at her lips. I had a feeling you'd see it my way. I'm thinking we redouble our efforts to recruit settlers, focusing on the unaligned and unsuspecting, instead of flushing ourselves to the gills with oath breakers claimed from the battlefield. How exactly do you plan to convince them? 
A knife point has sufficed well enough in the past, but you've inspired me to try a more diplomatic approach this day. What do you say, Binder? You might be able to ease them into the idea and save the lives of their friends and neighbours in the process. Well, it's a case of uh, either getting a quest or not getting a quest here, probably. So, if it means expediting the end to this meandering conflict, so be it. Remote settlement is now unlocked on a world map. The Fury howls a satisfied laugh and smacks you dead on the back. Our methods are surefire, you'll see. I'll mark the settlement on your map. She grins, biting her bottom lip, bloodied. I can't wait to see the outcome of your efforts. What can you tell me of the Scarlet Chorus? We are the voices of Narat's glory made manifest in the Chorus. Strength rises and the weak feed the soil. Deathnell smiles, standing tall as she extols the army. Our ways terrify the cowardly and shock the naive. But our traditions exist to offer promise and prestige to those fit to claim it. We abandon all petty rules for one simple law. The strongest must lead. What is your role within the Scarlet Chorus? Death Knell frowns her eyes, narrowing. Do you not recognize a Scarlet Fury when you see one? We are the warrior spirit of Chorus. Scholars of sword and shiv. She folds her arms, puffing out her chest. In peace we train those tough enough to endure our lessons but wise enough to learn from the best. In battle it's our duty to slay our foes and inspire the horde with our skill and bravery. Deathnell clicks her turn, looking aside to the others in the camp with an eye roll. We are fearless vanguard of this confused but glorious rabble. How has the military life treated you so far? Oh, it's been a wonder of wonders. I eat what I want, I shit where I want, I kill who I want. Sometimes I even combine pleasures. She winks at you. My enthusiasm for the work brought me here. A decorated Scarlet Fury veteran, eh? But I'm looking for advancement. If it means killing one of the Gan bosses, I'm not above taking a swing at someone bigger than me. They could be bigger than you, just make sure they don't hit harder than you, says Verse. Wise words, sister. Now I believe there's one more person of interest in this camp I need to talk to, and that is, of course, Fifth Eye. And we picked up a new quest, of course, then to travel to remote settlements, which I'm not sure when I'm going to be doing that. I may be doing it straight after exiting the camp. Who knows?